Hello friends. Recently, uh, water changes have been a, uh, a very, very uh, interesting topic in the, uh, in the YouTube community. And so I wanted to just add uh, something to it, some, something that I consider to be a little bit of common sense, some tips that, that I think will make, will make it a little bit better for, for everybody, regardless of the kind of tank that you're keeping, whether it's, it's you know, big cichlids in a, in, a, you know, in a tank that is just gravel and rocks, or, or maybe live bears like this with some plants, uh, regardless, uh, the, these tips are, are going to help out. And really what, what it comes down to, in my mind, especially if you're setting up a new tank, the tank hasn't become what is sometimes called seasoned or matured, uh, the best tip I could give you is to test, is to test your, is to test your tank. And, and by that, what I mean is when you first set up the tank, Every, every, every week or so at first, and then ultimately that, that, that time will spread out. But test the water and see where you're at and see if your test results are telling you that you should, you should change your water. I know a lot of you are, are of, of the mindset that, well, I, 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 do it, I do it every week regardless. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'd rather be preemptive. Uh, rather than, than risk, risk something happening. I, I, I get all that, and, and there's, there's some legitimacy to that. I'm not arguing with that. I think we need to dial it in, and, and some of you remember a video that I released a while back on canister filters where I talked about dialing it in. And what I would do is I would set up the canister and then run it for like three months, or at first really I'd run it for a month, run it for a month, and then open it up and take a look and see what it looked like. And if it looked great, I would just close it up and, and keep running it. Then I'd run it again, I mean, I'd open it up again in three months, and then in four and five, and eventually, I opened it up and looked and said, okay, this, this needs to be serviced. So now I had a time frame that I was working with, and I wrote it down, I wrote it down on a board that I keep, which is just sort of an ongoing, uh, just a ledger of, of, of you know, things that I do with the tanks, water changes, canister, servicing, that kind of thing, right? So that canister was dialed in. Now, that dialing in could change if, if the stock in the aquarium changed. I remove fish, I add fish, uh, maybe I decide to start feeding them a little bit more, maybe a, a, some more frozen foods, more protein food, uh, rich foods. That might change, it might change a little bit. So you do have to, you know, you have to monitor it, uh, but you can dial in your water change. All it takes is something really as simple as uh, as this. You know your 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 test strips. This is these are the test strips from uh, Aquarium Co-op. API makes some. Um, Tetramin makes some. Uh, Sarah makes some. I mean, you can get them from anywhere, and they're real simple and they're real fast. You know, every week at first, give it a test. Everything looks good. Leave it alone. Now, why would I say leave it alone? Because the truth is, is that every time you mess with an aquarium, every time you, you, uh, you clean the glass, you move around the decor, you, uh, you do anything really, you, you startle and create stress for the fish. And that actually is, uh, uh, can help precipitate disease. So you, you, you don't, you know, you want to mess as little as possible. That being said, I will probably, unless I do really do set up a father fish type tank with, you know, dirt and mud and capped with sand and lots of plants and, and uh, little invertebrates and snails and stuff and small, you know, some endlers and stuff. Uh, if I have that kind of tank, I, I would go for very long periods of time. But even in a tank like this, with a, a lot of a Sprite and some Anubias and uh, even a tank like this, I'm gonna do some regular water changes because uh, according to what I understand, and you correct me if, if I'm wrong, minerals are absorbed by the fish, right? Through gills, through their, you know, through their body, they absorb the minerals and the only minerals they're going to really absorb are what's available in the water column. And over time, those minerals are going to settle 
and no longer really be available to the fish. Now, you replenish those minerals when you do a water change. You put more minerals into the water column, which is very important. Some people talk about the reduction of hormones. I, I'm not, I haven't seen the science on that. Uh, it makes sense that this is how fish regulate growth and, and not getting too big in a small, you know, there's hormones in the water so they don't outgrow the, the environment. That's how they sort of monitor it. I get it. And, and where people are breeding and trying to sell fish that are bigger, they're doing lots of water changes to keep those levels down so the fish get bigger faster. I get that. Uh, but I'm more concerned about minerals and also what I remove, uh, you know, in the, in the form of uh, cloudiness and, and uh, muck and dirt and things of that nature. Now, this tank, interestingly enough, is one of the tanks that are probably the most in alignment with Father Fish and his philosophy. This is a sand-capped uh, dirt tank. And it's not dirt like I went to the creek and got dirt. This is dirt, this is dirt, uh, fluval, fluval uh, flora, I think it's called. It, it's a special substrate, which is, it's like dirt. And I, I, I put it in the bottom, leaving like an inch all the way around. And there's a video on how I put this together. And then I capped it with, with this substrate, which is like a sand. This is probably the closest to a, uh, a, a father fish tank. I got a nearite snail in there. I got some nearite eggs <laughs> showing up on the wood. Now these little fish, interestingly enough, make a lot of waste. There's also a, a pleco in here, a couple cories. They, they, they make a lot of waste. but. In testing this tank, I can go for two weeks. I can go for two weeks and, and not change anything, not, not change the water. I might test it again in a few months, see where I'm at as the fish put on more size, as more of the little fry that keeps showing up uh, get bigger. Uh, that might need to become weekly or maybe even extend out to three weeks. But, but testing the water is the, really the only way you can dial in your water changes and, and not mess with your aquarium unnecessarily. But, I, uh, but at this point in my sort of evolution as a fish keeper, I will say that I probably will continue doing water changes unless I jump in with both feet on one of those dirted, sand-capped type setups like are promoted by, by, uh, by Father Fish. The other tip I'll give you, I have to put a little co cover over the hose so I don't suck up any of the fry. But uh, the, other, the other tip I'll give you is to test your tap. You should test your tap. And uh, even if you're on a well, I've heard people who are on a well all of a sudden have a problem because uh, the local farmers started using a different kind of chemical and so that can turn into a real big issue. So uh, test your tap from time to time. Make sure the tap isn't isn't bringing something uh, unusual and and which if it is you can then hold off on water changes and test it again maybe in a few days and then determine whether or not it's safe to do a water change and use that tap water so there you have it dial in dial in your tank so that you mess with it on a minimal basis uh, don't neglect your tank don't don't take this as a reason to put off water changes if they're needed i know some of you feel better if you're being more preemptive i understand that also keep in mind you might be doing something that is unnecessary and creating unnecessary stress for the fish. And with every water change, there is the risk of making a mistake. You're filling it up with water, somebody starts the dishwasher and the washing machine and the water you're adding, te the temperature changes dramatically, right? You forget, you forget to dose the tank, you forget to condition the water. There's, errors that can be made during water changes. And if I had a dollar for every person that's told me my fish, I had to die off after a water change, it, it's amazing how often that comes up. So uh, uh, minimize them if you can by using test strips and, uh, and test your tap and, and, and you'll be good. You'll be good. You'll, you'll, you'll find that you don't really need to mess with your tank as much as maybe you're currently messing with it. Your fish will be happier, you'll be happier. If you have any comments about this, share them below, I'd love to hear them. And we all learn from each other at this channel. And I hope to see you on Saturday. We can talk about this and a lot more at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. 
every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central. That's 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. And if you'd like to support the channel further, consider becoming a Patreon, subscribing, hitting that bell, and all that good stuff. Details are in the description. Thank you, my friends. That's it for me. Bye-bye.